Hi there, I'm Sarah Wright from XBM, a proud Valiantist company. And today I'm going to be showing you how to use a lookup table with smart values in an automation to assign a score to an intake form submitted through JSM. There is a lot of little bits in here all to provide a fantastic solution. I hope you'll enjoy. Today I'm sharing with you a challenge that we were presented with and walk you through the steps for how a solution was provided. I'm going to take you through our requirements documentation. Then we're going to go look at an issue where it was applied to and then walk you through some of the back end mechanics of how all of that came together. So starting here with our requirements document and the challenge that was brought was to populate a score field on a JSM request. So the score is going to be a number, right? It's going to take some information and, uh, mm -hmm. and assess it and, and populate that score field. So what the client wanted to do was to use Jira service management as a way to intake project requests. And one of the caveats is that the requester, the person using that form, shouldn't know those values that might get assigned in the background. And so some of the tools that we used for the solution were custom fields added to a request type. Then we customized those labels that are shown on the portal. And these were drop down values because those are important because having a consistent set of answers helps us build out that automation that's going to take those values, make changes and convert them, and then ultimately populate our score field. So let's look a little bit more at what those fields are and what those values are that we're going to be using. So there are three different criteria that will be used to create the score. There's the goal, the business case, as well as the possible revenue. So first we created these three custom fields to use on our request type. Next, we laid out what we wanted to present to the person filling out the form. So that's our portal labels. So questions we'll be asking to them include, what initiative is this tied to? And then under the options are the answers they'll have to pick from. We're, we'll also be looking for them to provide us with information such as, is there a business case? And the options, yes or no. And ask them to provide some information as to, will it generate any revenue. And then those options are listed there. Now another team got together, right, and decided what are the values that they are going to assign to those options to ultimately produce that final score for that request. And so you can see those items right here. I feel like I should say right now what you're seeing is just all made up from my head. <laughs> this doesn't actually represent any client work we did, but more so provide you with an example of how to solve this, and then you can build out your own tables from there. So knowing that we have our goal, our business case, and our possible revenue, and their scores attached to each one of those that get added together to create our final score, Let's jump over and look and see what that looks like on an actual issue. Now here we can see what this looks like on an issue. So this is where all that magic has already taken place. Somebody filled out our form, they put these values in, and then our score was generated. So they provided us with the information that said their goal was process improvement. They did not have a business case and their revenue was 50 to $99,000. Let's take that, oh, and the ultimate score that got generated is 100. So let's come over and look at our table. So with the goal process improvement, they get 50 points. Business case, nope, so zero points for that. And then the revenue generated, that's how they earned that additional 50 points. And thus we had a score of 100. We've now switched over to show 
what those fields could look like on a request so that the person who comes in with their project request, this is what they might see. And for the summary, I have a great project idea. And we're presented with those questions that are tied to our custom fields. So what initiative is this tied to? What kind of goal? We're going with customer satisfaction. I'm going to say, yes, I do have a business case for this. And absolutely, it's going to generate revenue. We're going to go ahead and say it's going to generate over, well, it says $100. <laughs> and they'll submit that issue. And those answers are tied right there. Now we'll open up this issue and we'll see what score got generated based on those answers. So I'm just opening that issue over in a new tab and we'll see our answers and we see our score is not there yet. I'm going to run an automation and I'm going to use this automation called set score. And when I do that, it's going to pick up the values that are associated with these three fields and answers. And it's going to show our score, which just popped up there. And the total score for that is 250. You might be wondering, how did it know all of that? What's the even further behind the scene mechanics to make that happen? And so let's go take a look at the automation that we created. It's a little bit of a complex automation, but it's, it's a great opportunity for learning how these work. Let's come up to our rule details. So as you saw in that dropdown, the name of our automation is set score, and I do have it limited to a specific project and I'm the owner. But let's dive deeper into how this actually works. So because we saw it in our actions menu, we know that this is a manually triggered Absolutely, you can make this triggered when that issue gets created. For the purposes of our demo, though, I'm making it be manually triggered. And so what we're using here for our action on this is we are going to create a lookup table. So the lookup table is how we are going to tie together those answers, those options, with a number. So you can see right here where we have those first three answers of customer satisfaction, process improvement, unsure, and they equal 150 and zero, right? We got that information because we wanted to match up with what our requirements were, that that's how we are going to add value based on those answers. And so our table includes all of the answers for all of the questions. So we also see our uh, yes and no for is there a business plan and we see the potential revenues and the values that we put on those. So that's great, but what does this lookup table do for us? Well, now we're going to be able to use the values from here in something called smart values inside of Jira Automation. If you're not familiar with smart values, I'm going to walk you through the example that I have here and we'll include a link for additional information about smart values. So just generally speaking, smart values can do a lot of really cool things. They can pick up uh, the data that's put into fields and you can use that data. And in this case, I'm using that data to do some arithmetic. I'm going to expand this more options. I'm not actually going to use this. I'm going to delete it before I save it, but I just want to have somewhere to paste in so you can get a better example of, of, of what I have set in here, because our next action then is going to be to edit the issue to set our score field. And what we want that score to be is we're going to take the value of our first custom field, which was what goal is it meeting? And then we want to add that to our second value of, do you have a business case? And last, add that to our value of how much revenue is it going to generate? So just a quick walkthrough of, of this particular area. This first section, this says, hey, Jira, we're going to do some math. And then the math we're going to do is we're going to take the value that was input from this field 
And then we're going to get its related value from the table named scores. So let me just walk that back up for just a second. First, it says, hey, in the custom field goal, for each one of these items, go grab the score that exists. So this table that we have here looks a lot like the table we have here in our create lookup table action. And so we named our lookup table scores and we use that down here because we're going to use the scores table to get the value that is associated with the value from our custom fields. And then we're going to do that for each one of those answers. So for our goal, for our business case, and for our expected revenue or estimated revenue. Now, I didn't use those field names here because when I tried to use the actual field names, it never worked for me. It, it, it never got those things. So then I learned by using the custom field IDs over the field names, your equations and your smart values are going to work just a little bit better. All right. So then this last little bit that I have in here is just our end. So we're going to stop doing math here. So we took this whole thing and we put it up here into our score field, which is the thing that we want to have updated. Okay, so I came back to uh, the project request that we already had where our answers totaled up to 200 possible points. And now I'm just gonna test that automation and let's see it in action. And so I'm going to select all the answers that have zero values associated with them. And now that they're all there, I'll come to my actions and I'm going to, again, select set score. So it's going to run that automation in the background for me. My automation is currently in progress. And oh, now I look over here and I can see, yep, my score is indeed back to zero. So bringing us back to where we started, did we meet our requirement of populating a score field on a JSM request? We did indeed. And we did that by having a combination of custom fields that we added to our request types. We customized what the customer sees for those issue fields. And then we did an automation so that it could look up the values provided by our customer and then assign a numerical value to those. And then it did some addition and put all of those numbers together to populate our final score field. So I hope you enjoyed this solution to this challenge. If you have other ideas on functionality available within JIRA that can do that as well, do please drop us some comments. In the meantime, have a good one, everybody.